Welcome to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Before we get started with our presentation, just a few quick housekeeping items. The first is that attendees are welcome and encouraged to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A feature. You may pose your question to a specific panelist or ask a general question to any and all of the panelists. Also, just a reminder that your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And one week from today, a recording of the session will be available on that same registration website. But without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first panelist, which will be the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University. Thanks, Christopher. I'm going to go ahead and get my timer started too, so I stay on time. We'll go ahead and get the screen up to share. I'd like to welcome everyone tonight. Thanks for joining us. And a lot of different things that you could be doing, and uh, it's exciting to be able to connect with you, uh, even if it's virtually. It's a great way to connect us all together. I'm Tony Amos with the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University. We're two colleges in Central Minnesota. Uh, that operate in a partnership together. College of St. Benedict is a women's college and St. John's University is the men's school. I'm just looking to get the presentation started here. Here we go. We'll start with a quick view of uh, College of St. Benedict and the town of St. Joseph, which is about 6,000 people, a bedroom community outside of St. Cloud which is just under 200,000 people uh, total. Uh, the women live on the St. Ben's campus, uh, but both men and women attend both campuses for classes. This is a picture of the St. John's campus. It's about five miles away from St. Ben's in Collegeville, Minnesota, and it sits on an arboretum. It's about 2,700 acres with six lakes and 15 miles of hiking trails. Uh, so the men would live here, and again, the men and women would take classes together on each campus. And about 85% of our students do live on campus all four years. We're a liberal arts institution, uh, which means uh, we have a number of different programs that we offer. Uh, and there are a number of different courses that you take along with uh, courses within your major, uh, or if you minor as well. Typically about a third of your courses come from what we call our integrations curriculum, and that can lead to selecting major. We do not admit students to any particular academic program right out of high school. You come to St. Ben's and St. John's, explore your options, and then you're admitted into your major in your sophomore year, and 93% of our students do graduate in four years uh, with that process. Our average class size is 19 students. Uh, the largest class size we have is 36 students. So we really pride ourselves in the opportunity for get, to get individual attention uh, from faculty. Uh, over 80% of them are full-time and have the highest degree in their field. And as you're taking courses on campus, we know the importance of experiential learning. So undergraduate research, internships, uh, global studies, all are available at St. Ben's and St. John's. Um, you can see on the top picture here is a group of our students who attend our annual Washington DC internship program. Some accounting students here who are part of an internship program with corporate internships each year. Uh, all of the big four accounting firms do recruit at St. Ben's and St. John's. Uh, and then we have our uh, pre-med, uh, the pre-PT, pre-physical therapy, pre-dental, and nursing students uh, who have opportunities uh, both in the area and, and traveling abroad. And then uh, with our Arboretum, of course, a fantastic laboratory right outside the doors of the campus. I mentioned being a very residential campus, so there's opportunities to live on campus in the dorms in the first two years, but then we do have townhomes and apartments for juniors and seniors to live on campus. So even though you're, you're staying on campus, you're getting the kind of housing, maybe in a lot of cases even better, that you would anticipate getting off campus. Our global studies program has con continuously been ranked in the uh, top five nationally every year for the number of students who travel abroad in comparison to other liberal arts institutions. And the reason so many of our students can travel abroad is because we wholly own 17 semester long programs. So you're not going through an outside organization. You have the quality control of St. Ben's and St. John's organizing it, and you have a faculty member leading the trip, and you go with other St. Ben's and St. John's students. Involvement on campus includes clubs and organizations, over 100 clubs that are available, the Joint Events Council being our largest, that organizes concerts and dances and uh, comedians and other events on campus for students to attend. And students also get involved in athletics. We're Division Three for varsity in the NCAA, meaning we're non-scholarship for athletics. 
uh, but our coaches do recruit and there are tryouts and not necessarily everybody can make the team. So there are opportunities for students to get engaged in intramurals as well as club sports. If you're looking to continue to participate, but may, may not be at a varsity level. There's an example of some of our club sports like Nordic skiing and dance team and lacrosse. We also are strong in our faith. We're a Catholic school. Uh, both colleges are Catholic and are grounded in our Benedictine tradition within the Catholic faith. But we welcome students from all faith traditions or those who may not be practicing. What we really concentrate on are uh, the tenets of the Benedictine values. And so when we are um, engaging students on campus and uh, when they graduate and go off into the world, uh, we're looking to graduate students that have that sense of, of place, uh, have the opportunity to you know, think about stewardship, awareness of God, dignity of work, the many different uh, values that go beyond being Catholic or Christian, they're really human values. We're also very strong in students being able to gain internships and jobs. We actually, uh, St. Ben and St. John's rank one and two in the state of Minnesota for colleges for the number of uh, four uh, students getting jobs. And not just in the first year, this is a ranking that uh, looks at 10 years of, of data after graduation. And there's a look at a number of different companies that do come and recruit on campus. Now with our admission process, uh, we do have a number uh, or, or two different ways to apply our regular admission process for our application or using the Common App, we're a member of that as well. We are also test optional, so you can choose to send in a test score uh, or not, it's up to you. Uh, we'll just look at additional information if you do not send in a test score, like recommendation letters, your essay, um, other information that'll be helpful from your resume. You can see our profile here, generally 23 to 28 on the ACT, 3.3 to 3.9 is the middle 50%. And just under 80% of our students are admitted uh, that apply. Our total cost of attendance is $60,000 for tuition, room, and board and fees. Uh, but we do offer merit-based aid. We also offer need-based aid. And so you have the opportunity to re receive scholarships that could total as much as half of the total cost of attendance, uh, in addition to aid that could be offered through uh, completing the FAFSA and qualifying for grants, loans, and student employment. Thanks a lot for joining, and if you have questions, happy to answer them, and I can uh, type some answers in, in the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, St. Benedict and St. John's. Um, transitioning to our next presenter, we have Gonzaga University. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Carrie Weeks, and I'm Associate Director of Admission here at Gonzaga. Um, Gonzaga is a liberal arts and Catholic university in the Jesuit tradition located in Spokane, Washington. And at Gonzaga, we really believe that your education isn't just for you alone, but it's really meant to be um, put to work in the world. We want you to see um, how you can use your talents, your skills, your gifts to serve other people. Um, Gonzaga is uh, ranked nationally. It's 21 uh, in the 21st percent, rather, nationally. Um, as a university, and we really educate students from many different faiths and backgrounds for lives of leadership and service for the common good. We are located, as I mentioned, just um, in Spokane, Washington, just across the Spokane River. You can see it here in this picture. Here's our campus, and downtown is just across the river from us. The city is about 225,000 people within city limits and over um, 770,000 in the metro area. We have a great combination of urban activities as well as access to the outdoors. We also have excellent internships, restaurants, shopping, easy access to hiking, rock climbing, golfing, skiing. Our Gonzaga Outdoors Club will take students um, to the many different ski areas uh, that are nearby as well as on other outdoor adventures. So that's a, that's a big plus for a lot of students. Um, students also have free access to the city bus system with their Gonzaga ID. Gonzaga is a medium-sized university with just over 5,000 undergraduate students who come from almost all 50 states as well as about 40 countries. About half of our population is Catholic and the other half mostly other Christian denominations. Some are other religions as well and some have no particular religious background. And we have students from about 24 different faith backgrounds. Our staff and faculty mirror this uh, religious diversity. Uh, we provide excellent resources for students through many offices, such as the Center for Student Academic Success. That includes our Disability Access Office um, and free tutoring for about 20 different subject areas, 
I also really want to highlight our Unity Multicultural Education Center and our LGBTQ plus resource center. They're both great resources and homes away from home for students and making sure that whoever you are and however you identify that you feel supported and you have the resources you need on our campus. There is also an emphasis on interdisciplinary as well as hands-on experiences for students. So I mentioned internships, research, field work, all of those are available in all of our majors. We have an average class size of 23, a student faculty ratio of 11 to one, and faculty teaching our courses and our labs. So personal attention and advising are very much a part of your experience. Uh, we are actually ranked nationally in the top 5% for best undergraduate teaching. We also have happy students, about 92% of them continue after their first year. That ranking is from our COVID year, so typically it's a little higher. It's in the 94 and 95%. Um, our, we also have successful graduates with the class of 2019 saying that 94% of them are working or in grad school doing full-time service work as well. We offer over 75 different majors and programs in five colleges, um, and our nursing and our engineering programs are direct admission. Uh, we also have 56% of our students doing study abroad, um, and that includes places like our second campus in Florence, Italy. Um, students are able to take their financial aid with them when they study abroad, and that has allowed more and more students to be able to study abroad over the years. 83% um, of our students do come from over 200 miles away. And so um, while Gonzaga offers great academic challenges, we do that with a lot of support and opportunities for students to grow and share their gifts outside the classroom. Uh, we offer over 130 different clubs and organizations, great residence hall communities, uh, speakers, dances, cultural festivals, service opportunities, optional retreats and spiritual options, and very active intramural club and of course Division I athletics. Uh, we use the common application for admission and to determine merit scholarship. Um, both of those are due December 1st. Uh, students who are interested in nursing and engineering do have to list that on the application to be admitted into that major. We are test optional for um, admission to all majors, all scholarships, the honors program, all of our um, special programs. And our middle 50% you can see here is a 3.53 to a 3.9 for an unweighted GPA. We do consider curriculum along with other holistic factors such as writing, extracurricular activities, and character. Now, December 1st is also the deadline for the FAFSA and accessing any federal or state need-based aid. If a student's not qualified for FAFSA, then they can use a need analysis form with our financial aid office to access Gonzaga aid. Um, we also have about 99% of our students receiving a merit scholarship, and we offer many separate application scholarships, such as the honors program, music scholarships, Gonzaga leader scholarships, um, and the Gonzaga scholarships and grants are guaranteed for four years, as long as you are a full-time student and in good standing. So I hope that this has helped give you a taste of the Gonzaga experience and um, a place that you can go um, where you can have a transformative and a, um, a well-rounded education. I encourage you to attend some of our virtual programming events or schedule an interview with me if you have more questions. I welcome your questions in this session too. And go Zags. Thank you very much, Gonzaga. Um, our next presenter this evening is Pacific Lutheran University. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us this fine Thursday night. Uh, my name is Kaylee Sadoff. I am a regional admission counselor for PLU, which means I work with a lot of students that do not come from Washington. Um, I use she, her, hers pronouns. I graduated from PLU in 2016, uh, and tonight we'll be talking about Pacific Lutheran University. Uh, a lot of this might sound familiar to some of the other schools. PLU is a small liberal arts school, and we are located out in Tacoma, Washington, which is about an hour south of Seattle, about 40 minutes south of the airport, and there's a ton to do near campus. We're in such a great location. Uh, within an hour of PLU or two hours, you can be skiing in the Cascades or hiking at Mount Rainier, um, up in Seattle at the Space Needle. Uh, so many great things to do around the PLU and Tacoma area. Uh, an overview of our student body, PLU has about 3,100 students with an average class size of 20. 
and a student to faculty ratio of 12 to one. Uh, that means that your professors know you. So when it comes time for looking for a mentor or doing research or just having someone that cares about your academic success, that is absolutely present throughout um, our students' academic experiences. 38% of the PLU student body identifies as students of color. So we're starting to look like the world that we live in. Um, about a third of our students are first generation college students. So we have a lot of additional resources available um, for students navigating the college application process as well as college in general. Uh, and then our average weighted GPA for an incoming student is 3.7. We do use your weighted GPA for scholarships and for admission. Uh, PLU has three academic divisions and four schools. Uh, Academic-wise, some of our top majors are nursing, business, music, education, criminal justice, kinesiology. Uh, as a liberal arts school, we kind of have really strong majors in a lot of different pockets. And so there are a lot of academic programs, as well as interdisciplinary programs for students to study more than one area. We are also a Division III school, which means that we compete against other Division III schools in the Northwest Conference. Uh, it also means we don't do athletic scholarships, uh, but we have very strong athletic programs of students who are participating as part of a team, not because they're there on a scholarship, but because they're there because they care enough to, about the sport to play it uh, and to take the time to do it. Uh, we have over 250 conference championships, 11 national championships, and really strong community and athletic programs. Uh, as in terms of other involvement, uh, we have over 70 clubs and organizations, everything from our pre-law association to hammocking club. Uh, it's really easy to start a club if there's something you're passionate about or involved in that maybe we don't already have, but it's very easy to get involved on campus to build your own community through clubs and organizations, athletics and other programs. Uh, study away is one of the biggest things at PLU. Uh, we say study away rather than study abroad because we do offer domestic programs for students who maybe don't have resources or documentation or time to spend a long-term study away program in another country. We've gone to over 80 countries in the last 15 years. Over 50% of our students study away, study abroad while they're at PLU. And we were the first US school to have classes on all seven continents at the same time. Uh, you can study away for every single major um, personally speaking, this was a huge part of my PLU experience and why I chose PLU, uh, but global engagement is a big part of our campus, specifically through our study away programs. Um, in terms of admission, PLU is on the common application. It is completely free to apply. Uh, we do have some priority dates, but you can apply to PLU up until May 1st. Uh, we accept those applications throughout the year, and I'm the person that gets to work with all students coming from, again, most of them not Washington, <laughs> and so whatever state you're in, I get to work with you throughout the application process. Uh, the different pieces we look at are your transcript, again, using your weighted GPA, um, your recommendation, your essay, your application itself, and then we are test optional. So we made that transition several years ago. So we do academic scholarships and admission without test scores. Um, if you want to send those, if you think my test score looks just like my grades, perfect. Um, great, we will take that into account, uh, but we do not require test scores for admission or scholarships. Um, in terms of accepting college level credits for first year students, we accept up to 30 semester hours. So if you are taking AP classes, IB classes, concurrent enrollment, we do give you credit for those classes for up to 30 semester hours at PLU. Uh, the last slide I have talks about scholarships and financial aid. 97% uh, of our students do receive some sort of financial aid from the university. I believe our average aid package this last year was about $37,000. Um, that's broken down from academic scholarships, which go up to $27,000 per year. We do have presidential scholarships for students who are leaders and involved in their communities and schools. Uh, we offer fine arts scholarships. So if you are interested in art and design, dance, music, theater, uh, you don't have to major or minor to get scholarships or participate in those programs. And we also offer yellow ribbon scholarships for our veterans and their dependents um, and families involved in that military world. Um, so thank you so much for your time this evening. Here's my information if you have questions. Um, I'll also be there in the chat. And so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out that way too.
Thank you very much, Pacific Lutheran. Um, as we move into the second half of our presentations, just want to reinforce what was just stated, that attendees are welcome and certainly encouraged to ask any questions they may have through the Q&A feature. Uh, but up next this evening is Southwest Minnesota State University. Hey, everybody. My name is Charlotte Wally. I'm an admissions counselor here at SMSU. Um, I really appreciate you all taking the time to join us this evening. Um, because our time together is so brief, I really just wanted to hit on a few points about SMSU that we're really proud of, and then spend some time telling you about how you can find out more about SMSU um, and start to explore for yourself at your leisure. So first, the quick facts about SMSU. We are a small state university in the Minnesota state system. Um, we have about 2,200 students on campus, uh, and that means that we have um, a very small, close-knit community. We talk a lot about the Mustang family. What that means for you in the classroom is that 90% of our classes have less than 30 students, and our student-to-faculty ratio is 15 to 1. Um, we also offer 60 bachelor's degrees, including 13 that are fully online, and five master's programs. Um, we have Division II athletics, if that's something that's interesting to you as well. Um, and then we're just, the, I, we're really focused on that close-knit community. You're going to see it over and over again um, as you get, learn more about SMSU. But that's not just true on our campus, that's also true in the community. So we're located in Marshall, Minnesota. Um, we're about three hours from the Twin Cities, two hours from Mankato. Um, and there's about 15,000 people in Marshall. So enough for you to enjoy places to eat, going to the movies, things like that. Um, but also it feels very safe. It feels very family oriented. Um, it's easy for students to get jobs and internships in the Marshall community. And so um, probably for many other reasons as well, we were ranked the safest campus in Minnesota this year. And we're really proud of that fact. Um, another thing that we're proud of is that we were ranked last year, the seventh most affordable university in the nation. So um, this year, it costs us a little bit less than $18,000 to go to SMSU. That's tuition, fees, room, and board, all included. Um, but we don't just want to stop there. We want to make sure that the opportunity to have a four-year bachelor's degree is something that's affordable for students. So we do also offer merit and academic-based aid for students, as well as financial aid. And we're always looking for other opportunities and ways that we can partner, especially in Minnesota, um, to offer a different different scholarship opportunities for different student populations. Um, we're also test optional, like some of the schools have talked about tonight. We started that in 2019 and that will continue now forever, not just when the pandemic ends. Um, and again, like you've heard before, uh, if you have a test score that's strong, you can certainly submit that. That can help you to get scholarships, but not having a test score at all or not having a really strong one is never gonna hurt your ability to be admitted or to earn scholarships. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is our Mustang Promise. So another thing we're really proud of here at SMSU is our ability to help prepare students to take that next step after college um, to get out into the workforce. So we've been surveying our graduates for the last six or seven years. And what we found is that 99% of them are employed or haven't have taken their next necessary step in schooling within six months of graduation. And the number that I think is even cooler is that 97% of them are in the field they studied for. So that means the time and the money that you invested in your college degree has helped to springboard you into the career that you wanted. Um, and we're really proud of our ability to do that with our students. So we made the Mustang promise. And this promise to our students is that they will be able to find a job or be admitted into their next step of schooling within six months of graduation. And if they can't, then we will pay for their first semester of graduate school here at SMSU. And while you heard that we don't have a breadth of master's programs, we do have um, some really versatile ones. We have a master's of business, business administration, as well as a master's in education. So we have some master's programs that can help students get into a whole variety of different um, career tracks if they need that. So those were just a couple of things I also I wanted to highlight. I do also want to talk about a couple of the most popular majors at SMSU. In case those catch your interest, we've got a really strong school of education. We draw a lot of students and you'll find that there are a lot of teachers in Southwest Minnesota teaching now, maybe some of your teachers who are graduates of SMSU. We also have a strong exercise science program, business, psychology. Um, we have a school of agriculture and that's focused on a lot of sort of 
ag agriculture areas that you might not think of, agronomy, agribusiness, ag education. Um, and then we also have a culinology program. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later if I have time. But what I wanna do now is shift to ways that you can learn more about SMSU and start to connect with our community. Um, we know that right now it's maybe not possible for you to vis visit campus, um, whether it's because of safety measures or because you're busy with your junior or senior year. So I recommend that you start by going on our website, smsu.edu and checking out our virtual campus experience. It's a scrolling banner on the homepage and there you'll find a whole bunch of videos you can hear from students, faculty, staff, alumni about their SMSU experience, what makes us great, what makes us unique. Um, you'll also find a five minute campus tour video that you can watch, which is a great starting point to see glimpses of campus. And then we have an interactive campus map as well. So there you can check out pictures, videos, blurbs about the spaces and resources we have on campus and where those are all located. The next step would be to come and actually visit campus for yourself. We are open for visitors. Um, we have individual weekday visits with different safety measures set in place between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Week, on weekdays all throughout the year. We also do some open houses periodically, and we happen to have one coming up on Saturday, March 20th from one to four, that's called our spring showcase. So I hope that you'll take one of those opportunities to come and check out SMSU for yourself. And if you do have more questions, please put those in the chat. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much, Southwest Minnesota State. Um, up next this evening is St. Cloud Technical and Community College. All right, hello everybody. Let me get this going here. All right, I'm gonna start my time here now. All right, uh, well, welcome everybody. As everyone kind of says, yeah, it's nice for you guys to be able to come out here during the evening times like this. I'm kind of doing this virtual world like we've been living in for the last year or so. Hopefully things are kind of going on the upside, I think, for everybody. But uh, no, pleasure meeting all of you. I wish, obviously, we could see each other face to face. It's more enjoyable. But my name is Matt Pickleman. I'm one of the admissions reps here at St. Paul Tech Community College. Um, I've been working here for a couple of years. Um, I also was a past student as well. Um, I went to this college about in 2009, did my general education courses, I saved some money, played some baseball, really fun experience, and then transferred on over to St. Paul State afterwards, get a bachelor's. And, um, that'll be a big piece of what I talk about today is, you know, saving money, looking out for your future, looking out for college debt, um, some of those things that where you can basically just get your life in a good direction after college and not be stressed with, with those factors that you get from, you know, from pursuing um, more longer degrees, because there's a lot of good opportunities just with one to two year degrees that we have here in campus. If it's, you know, health programs, if it's the trades, or if it's just Let's get my generals and then figure out what I want to do first and then go to a four-year college. Um, so that's kind of what we're really focused on. But um, first off, though, I just want to give you guys some um, quick fast facts. Um, so there are, um, we got St. Ben's here um, that's also on this um, Zoom call, and they're actually very close to us. So we are located in central Minnesota as well, uh, which I love central Minnesota. I'm from southern Minnesota, which um, I'm actually very close to Marshall. I love Marshall. Um, but I did, I definitely fell in love with Central Minnesota. And that's what I encourage all of you guys to figure out where do you see yourself going? Where do you see yourself being your home? Um, and I fell in love with it. A lot of small towns around the area, but it's still got kind of that city vibe of about 80,000 people with the St. Cloud in general. Um, but then we also are right next to the Mississippi River, um, only an hour away from the cities, which is nice. So, you know, we do your um, traveling that way. And then we're also two miles away from St. Cloud State University. Um, which we have a partnership with them and living in the dorm so you can still you know save money but still get that college experience which is a big plus um campus life we have an average class size of 18. i think that's given there's zero auditorium classes at two-year colleges when i was a student here i had classes of six people um, you walk the halls and the teachers really they stop they talk to you they you know they get on you if you're missing stuff and you turn something in it's truly that kind of that small school atmosphere, which if you like that, I really encourage you to look at it. 98% um, job placement, that is huge. I, I do remember um, going to the four-year college and you know they help with the interview skills, the resumes and all that. But two-year colleges, we actually have industry partners, companies that feed off of our students and are looking to hire them. Um, so most people, if you're going into a specific two-year field, you will get a job before you graduate. That's a very good feeling to have. Um, then basically you just need to get your degree, 
and you can kind of move on, which is it's amazing. Um, we got 5,600 students on campus, 335 are PSEO. Definitely encourage, you know, get some college credits done in high school. And like I said, we have the dorms and then apartments that students will live in near campus. And then we are Division Three Junior College um, Athletics, which, like I mentioned, I played baseball. I also coach on campus. Um, so if you're one of those inspiring athletes, really look at junior college. It's a good head start. And then plus, you know, it sets you up for recruitment to four-year colleges afterwards. And then we have 30 plus student clubs organizations, and we also have Skill USA competitions, which Skills USA would be our trades, you know, transportation, construction, manufacturing, the programs that are hands-on, and they do skills competitions. Um, so that's kind of a little bit about it, but so like what, like why choose a two-year technical college? And this is, you know, what, what are we exactly? I mean, students that get attracted to our college, they're people who are A, looking to save money. Um, I think we all know an aunt and uncle, a parent who is paying off student debt until they're 40 years old. Um, honestly, I'm guilty of that. I have a lot of student debt and I wish I could do things over a little differently. Go for a two-year program that pays very well and do all the things that I want to do, the cabin life, the toys, the four-wheelers, all that. Um, so we get a lot of students that that's their main focus is they're career driven. The college experience is wonderful. I, I had the college experience. I loved it. But the opportunity and the employment, when you're older, you look back at that and you're like, I wish I would have done things differently. And so we get a lot of very career focused students that choose um, our college because they want to get in, get out and make very good money and be successful. Um, so we have two year hands on programs. But then, like I said, we have the liberal art classes where people come to do generals to save money and then move on to get their bachelor's. Um, these are our programs that we have. So we have health sciences. Um, so our most popular program on campus would be our health fields. So that would be like pre sonography um, There'll be our nursing, our dental, our surgical technology, um, some of those fields, paramedicine. But then, like I mentioned, the big one is construction, manufacturing, and transportation. Uh, those are the one, the two-year programs where I'm not joking, go online and look up Google plumber versus the doctor. And it looks at the lifetime of their money that they make compared to their debt to their income ratios, which I encourage you to look at. And it's, it's amazing. So, I mean, people from one to two year program, they get in, get out, and they're making $22 to start out. It takes about 10 years to end up being a journeyman and a master, like plumber, or electrician, and they're making $120,000 to $150,000. Um, and they usually leave with about only $15,000 in debt. But then we also have a lot of business IT programs. Um, that are very good as well. They're very transferable. Um, but then, like I said, a lot of our chunker people are doing transfer pathway programs that um, are going to get in, get out, and then go to the four-year college afterwards. Um, I do believe my time is up. We just have like five, 10 seconds here. But then the admissions process, um, we have just an application fee of $20, apply online, send in your transcripts, test scores, and then you have an AccuPlace or test that you have to take to get placed into your program of choice. Um, and then obviously the FASPA, take a look at that, take a look at tuition reimbursement programs too. All righty, thank you. Uh, um, yeah, appreciate it. If you have any questions, just feel free to go in the chat and we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you, St. Cloud. Um, and our final presenter this evening is the University of Iowa. All right, perfect guys. Um, well, I'll kind of bring us home and uh, make sure I kind of stick to that six minutes so we have some time at the end for questions and anything like that. But my name is Haley and I am the Minnesota Regional Admissions Counselor for the University of Iowa. Uh, basically, that's just a fancy way of saying that I am one of our seven counselors who is based outside of the state. I live uh, and work full time in the Twin Cities area and I've been a resident out here for about the past three years or so. So I know we're not able to get together in person today and, and grab coffee and kind of chat through the admissions process, but I like to mention that just in case we have any sophomores or juniors on the call, hopefully by the time you're kind of in your search and begin getting serious about Iowa, um, we have the opportunity to kind of connect in the Twin Cities area without you having to make that trip to Iowa City. Um, I was a graduate. I graduated back in 2016 with a degree in communication studies and a minor in human relations. So if you have any questions about what it's like to be a student, that experience is still relatively fresh in my mind and I love to talk about my time as a Hawkeye. So the University of Iowa is a large public four year university located in Iowa City, Iowa. That's going to be about a four and a half hour drive from the Twin Cities area. 
Um, when you see this photo, I think it can make campus look very large and quite overwhelming at first, but I assure you kind of once you're in Iowa City kind of walking around, you'll see that campus is actually quite compact, easy to get around. Average walk time is going to be about three to five minutes between classes. Now back here towards the upper half of the photo where you see my cursor going over, that's the Iowa River and that's really how we organize campus. So everything above the river, that's our west side, that's got some residence halls, the University of Iowa Hospital and Clinics, which is one of the largest teaching hospitals in the US. So if you are thinking medicine, you wanna be relatively close to home, um, Iowa is definitely a great campus to keep on your radar. And then we also have some of our graduate colleges, College of Law, Dentistry, Medicine, and then some athletic facilities like um, Kinnick Stadium for football, Carver Hawkeye Arena for basketball, volleyball, wrestling. Everything below the river is your east side of campus. This is your primary undergrad campus where we say probably about 90, 95% of your time will be spent. Right here in the middle of the page, these five buildings make up what we call the Pentecrest um, or our, like our old capital quad area. That really is kind of the heartbeat of our campus with everything stemming from there. So you will have some classes, discussion, labs, all within those main five buildings. But off to the left, you'll see things, um, I guess it's out of the view of the photo, but to the left, you'll find the College of Engineering, Education, the uh, Library, Student Rec Center. To the right, you have things like our Student Union, um, our College of Business, let me minimize those, our College of Business, um, and some residence halls. Now, if you can imagine with me, you're standing right here at that heartbeat in that center point, you follow that line, long sidewalk, cross the street, and on the left-hand side of the photo, just across from campus, you're in downtown Iowa City. So that's something we really like to emphasize is kind of that downtown Iowa City relationship with the University of Iowa. They really grew up together and then hand in hand. So not only do you have everything going on on campus, but you have everything going down in Iowa City as well. Block parties, restaurants, book short, books, shops, boutiques, patio seating for restaurants. It's a great, creative, young, fun college town. Um, that you'll definitely have a lot to do and, and new places to explore as you start this next chapter. Now, focusing in a little bit on who makes up our Hawkeye family, we've got about 30,000 total students, but if you focus solely on our undergraduate population, we're sitting at right around 25,000 students, so definitely a larger university, but something that I really like about Iowa City is it is your Big Ten school with, you know, big academic programs, a little bit bigger class sizes, bigger athletic events. Um, however, it is a small community feel. I never once felt like I was on a campus with over 25,000 students and that's something we really um, try to strive for is just that connectionness, accessibility of professors, discussion-based classrooms, trying to make that bigger experience feel a little bit smaller. Um, so we have students coming from all 50 states, over 100 different countries. It definitely is kind of your Midwestern melting pot. We do not have a required ACT or GPA to apply. So I like to provide this just as an average so that you know kind of where you're sitting. Our average applicant will have about a 3.7 GPA on a 4.0 scale and around a 26, 27 ACT. Now, again, that is just the average. We do not have a minimum to apply. Our application is gonna look at your ACT, SAT score, your GPA, which can be weighted or unweighted, and then the core courses that you've taken in high school. This would include courses in math, science, history, world language, English, kind of those five main subjects. Once you put in your information, our application does the work for you. It generates what's called an RAI score, um, which is basically just kind of your admission index. Let us know kind of where you fall. As a Minnesota resident, we are looking for a 255 or higher to be admissible. For all of my juniors, and if there's any seniors in this session, we are test flexible this year. So um, if you don't wanna submit an ACT or SAT score, you will have the option to submit a personal statement instead. And then again, I did mention this, but just to reiterate, we will take a weighted GPA. That's true for both scholarships and admission. Um, I know I only have like 30 seconds here, so that's a quick breeze through and there's more scholarships and things we can talk about. So please feel free to connect individually. But um, average class size is about 24 students. So even though we are a larger school, you will find that kind of smaller classroom experience. You certainly will have some large lectures. I don't wanna lie to you or mislead you. That's what you see here on this main screen. However, we say less than 4% of your total classes throughout your four years will be this lecture size. Um, so again, just wanna emphasize that while you will have some bigger classes, we really try to get those smaller, um, usually sitting around that 23 or so. Tons of student organizations, things to get involved with outside of your academics, study abroad, research, um, club sports, intramural store, student organizations, performances, 
definitely a really robust campus with a lot to offer that student experience. So if you're interested in learning more about becoming a Hawkeye, uh, I would love to connect with you guys. Six minutes surely goes by fast uh, as you start talking about some of these awesome things all of our campuses have to offer. So uh, I threw my email in the chat, but here's kind of some general admissions info. I'd love to talk with you further. Um, thanks so much for spending your night with us, guys. We surely appreciate it. Thank you very much, University of Iowa. And thank you to all of our presenters this evening. We do have about uh, five minutes remaining. So attendees, if you have any additional questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A. Um, and while we're waiting to see if any of our attendees have questions, I will pose the following question to you all and we can go around and answer it. Um, so six minutes is not very long. Um, and so what's one thing that you did not have time to include in your presentation, whether it's an event or tradition on campus you'd like to speak about, a fun fact, or just something you really didn't have time to talk about that you'd like to quickly discuss now. And we'll go in the same order. So we'll start with St. Benedict and St. John. Thanks. So we talked about uh, traditions in another one I was on and kind of a fun tradition we have uh, related to our uh, our Catholic mass that's offered. Beginning of the year, we always do uh, what's called mass on the grass. So it's a big outdoor gathering in front of the church. And with COVID this year and getting kind of creative, uh, that led to a new winter tradition of mass on Lake Sag, the, the ice uh, of Lake Sag. So the big lake out in, in behind uh, campus at about 300 people join uh, for that one in about 10 degree weather. So looking to continue that one each year. Thank you. Uh, Gonzaga? Yeah, um, a really fun tradition that we have comes right around um, March Madness time and a little bit before um, for our men's basketball games. Um, some of the really big ones when we know we're going to be on ESPN or something, there's a tenting uh, procedure where students will, um, they have waited in line to pick up their free tickets and then they pick up their free tickets, but then they also are going to get a tweet that tells them to go to a certain part of campus and they form teams of like eight people who are gonna stay in a tent together. And then they all get this tweet at the same time and they run across campus to go to that location. And then they start handing out the numbers for the different tents. And the lower your number, the closer you're going to be um, to the floor um, for that particular game. Plus they actually do stay in these tents and they have a great time um, staying in the tents. If it gets too cold, we take them, uh, you know, tell them they have to go back to the residence halls, but um, they stay in the tents and they still all have to go to class. So they have to work their schedules out like that. But it's really fun. Sometimes the basketball players come by and bring pizza and, and just say thank you for supporting us. And um, it's just a, a really um, fun um, atmosphere. When I was in college, you could just show up on game day at my college and get a ticket. Uh, Pacific Lutheran. Awesome. Um, sorry, I'm realizing my lighting is crazy also. Um, so our one of our biggest traditions is called Lala Pialusa. Um, we have a lot of ties to local artists um, and musicians in the Seattle Tacoma area. And so we invite local artists to come perform on the golf cart or the golf course. And it's a full day um, where we're just out there celebrating in different clubs, set up booths. And it's usually in May, right before finals. So those um, beautiful Western Washington sunny days that do happen, uh, we get to go out there and just celebrate local artists and play in community as a full campus. Uh, right before finals start. So a little bit similar to mass on the grass, um, but <laughs> just a fun all campus tradition we do each year. Great, thank you. Uh, Southwest Minnesota State. So I was gonna actually share a, a fun fact that I didn't get to, but you might've seen on our presentation. Um, all of our academic buildings are interconnected between tunnels, links, um, mini versions of the sky bridges that you're familiar with in Minneapolis. Um, so you do actually have to go outside to get from your dorm room, but then once you're in the rest of campus, you never have to put your coat back on. And um, I'm assuming most of you are from Minnesota, so you know how cold the winters get. If you're down in the southwest Minnesota area, you know there's also a lot of wind. So it's a huge selling point to our students that our buildings are all connected and they can go from breakfast to class to work to workouts, all of those things and never have to put their coat back on. Great, thank you. St. Cloud? You do have a beautiful campus, by the way. I like it. I almost played baseball there. I like it. <laughs> I had to give her a little props. Um, yeah, for like St. Cloud Tech, uh, one thing, obviously, we're more about kind of the academics and the opportunities, but 
Um, don't want to fool you. I mean, being a student here, I had, I had a heck of a time. I mean, being having a partnership with St. Cloud State University, one thing that's unique and it shares. So you can play all the intramural sports over there. Um, you can basically join in any club organizations over there. And then also having the opportunity of living in the dorms. And one thing that we do kind of, um, so we have outdoor hockey. I'm sure hockey fans in Minnesota here know about it. But so at the University of uh, St. Cloud State, we'll actually play on Lake George and they'll compete against one of the other people in the conference. And um, St. Cloud Tech Athletics, the student senate, the clubs and organizations partner up with that university when we kind of host that outdoor event. And it's, it's a blast. I, don't, I know hockey's not for everyone when you're sitting outside in the cold, but it's, it's a lot of fun. But um, I guess that would be the one thing that would be kind of unique is getting the, the affordability of a two-year college, but having the, also the, the partnership and the experience of a four-year too. Great, thank you. And University of Iowa. All right, I'll go rapid fast here. Um, I would say a tradition that I really love at Iowa, I'm just kind of defaulting to that would be, uh, it's called the Wave. So you may have kind of heard of it. It kind of made national news through ESPN when the first season it came out, but we have a hospital and clinics just right next to our Kinnick football stadium. That very top floor serves uh, children with cancer. So pediatric patients from floor to ceiling, recent renovations have made that glass windows. So children can um, kind of go over there with their families and they have a bird's eye view right into Kinnick Stadium and on a Saturday they can watch the game with their family and cheer on the Hawks and at the end of the first quarter the announcer will say all right let's turn and wave up to the kiddos and their family and as a group of 75,000 people whether you're cheering for the Hawkeyes or not um, you take that moment to wave up to the kiddos and their families so definitely a feel-good moment gives you all the goosebumps and that's a super special part um, and tradition to be a part of on campus. Great thank you. And thank you to all of our presenters this evening for sharing your time and information about your schools. And especially thank you to all of our attendees for joining us. Just a few quick housekeeping items. When you close this window, you will receive a very quick four question survey that you ask you take a minute and complete. And also just a reminder about one week from today, a recording of the session will be available on that same registration website. But again, thank you to everybody. Um, have a great night and good luck in your college search.